Hi friends, happy new year. I hope you're having a wonderful 2024 so far. Sorry if this looks super chaotic, but we have a ton of um, things to go through today. So let's just jump in. This video um, I have been thinking about for a while and also kind of avoiding talking about my journaling lineup and process for 2024. So I figured this one would be a little bit easier to start with. But just know that the lineup video is coming as I'm still kind of processing everything throughout this month. So I've really been enjoying videos that I've seen on YouTube about the best and the worst stationary purchases um, from 2023. And I thought this was a really fun way to kind of reflect on the things that I've purchased and consumed and have actually been using or not using. I wouldn't consider them the worst purchases, but maybe some that I've regretted uh, purchasing. So let's get into it. So starting off with planners and journals, if you've been watching my videos and following me on Instagram, you'll know that my favorite planner and journal of 2023 was the Sterling Ink Common Planner in the B6 size. I wanted to test out the format and see if I liked the all-in-one um, kind of like layout meaning having a journal and a planner in one. Um, what I found out is that I love Sterling Ink Common Planner uh, layout in terms of the weeklies and then the grid pages in the back. This size also has become my favorite size for journaling. So that was a wonderful experience. Um, I did realize that I still do prefer to keep my journals separate from my planners. So I think for 2024, I will definitely continue with a Sterling Ink notebook and the B6 size, but I would like to kind of experiment with other um, planners, possibly in the B6 size or smaller. Um, I just don't need them all in one book. I did love this um, for the time being, um, but it did stay at home. It's not one that I would carry around with me. Uh, so if you want to learn more about my experience with this, you can watch um, a previous video that I did specifically on this. Previously, I was planning in a Hobonichi Weeks and I Definitely, it was my second year of using Hobonichi Weeks, and I like the format. I, I liked the size. I just really, I, did, I didn't keep up with it. And I think there were a lot of factors in that. Um, one factor of me just like kind of giving up on my Hobonichi Weeks is that I kind of just didn't need all the extra space and the extra like pages um, in the front and in the back. I just never really even used them up. And so for me, it just felt very wasteful and um, just not something I could fully utilize and that bothered me. So what I really appreciate about the Sterling Ink um, kind of layout and uh, perspective is that there aren't really any pages for me to waste. Um, I don't really use the goal setting um, and tracking pages in the front, but I have seen other videos that have given great ideas of um, ways to use it if you don't use the goal tracking. So I think for next time I would definitely do that. But all that to say, there's not even that much of it in the beginning, which I appreciate. And then it just goes into the blank pages in the back, which I used for journaling. And I loved. Um, I really like the grid size and the paper. The grid size is pretty comparable, or if not comparable, to the size of the Hoenichi planners. 
and I do like the more faint grid appearance in the Sterling Ink um, compared to the Hoanichi. And this is the Tomo River S, the newer version of the paper. Um, and I actually really like it. It's still very thin and it's smooth and it works really well with fountain pen ink. But I actually really like the Sterling Ink paper. I think it's just as good, if not better, than the one, the original one that was in Hobonichi. So for the rest of this year, or maybe just this month, I think I will continue journaling in the Sterling Ink B6 um, notes part of this because I did finish the weeklies uh, since I had like a, a compact late start uh, for this so I bought it in I think it started in like June and it ended in January so I finished that um, but I'll still continue to use the notebook pages and then for the journal that was my least favorite purchase of 2023 I have been using the Hobonichi A6 size for memory keeping since around 2022 and it was the size and the notebook that got me back into daily journaling and scrapbooking. Um, specifically with the birth of my son, it really helped um, me kind of capture all those different milestones and family memories. So for that, I always loved the Hobonichi A6 size and the Techo uh, planners. Um, and then uh, in the beginning of 2023, I purchased an A6 Avec for the first time and, uh, to use as my memory keeping for my son and my family. And while I did it every single day in 2022, in the beginning of 2023, the second book, I just really fell behind. Like there are huge chunks of time where I did not fill out anything and it really caused me a lot of anxiety and um just didn't I just felt like not great about it so towards the end of this book I started back journaling memories of significant days so like Christmas or um, birthdays things like that um events that we went to but most of them I didn't even like write anything in yet. So I'm just, I'm very behind. And what I realized going forward is I'm going to still stay in an A6 because I think the size is great for everyday short form memory keeping, especially with printing out small photos and decorating pages. Uh, but I think also, again, the Hobonichi has all these pages that I do not use for memory keeping in the back, but also, um, since this is a planner, like, I don't use monthly pages, I don't use, um, this year-long tracker in the front, I just think it's a, it's a waste, so what I, um, so what I plan to do for 2024 is to have a A6 size notebook, most likely one of the Hobonichi plain grid notebooks. And I am just going to do memory keeping on my own and kind of try to do daily little simple moments with photos and minimal decoration um, and just little captions uh, for each. I don't have to have that pressure of writing long entries every single day. Um, I'm gonna try that and see how that works. I think since I've been keeping up daily with memory keeping in my five-year Hobonichi, that was putting a lot more like pressure and stress of then rewriting it with pictures in this memory keeper journal. So that was also contributing to the anxiety and the stress of it all. So it was not becoming fun and enjoyable. So that's what I, that's what I've realized moving forward. And I'm hoping that that will be a bit more of an improvement for 2024.
next up is my favorite fountain pen purchase of 2023 and this one is probably no surprise to many of you uh, but it is something that i purchased towards the end of 2023 and it is the twisby eco cream in rose gold and this one was a really popular pen um, on social media and I was very excited because I love Twisby Ecos. They're so reliable, they're affordable, and the quality is just really great um, for the amount that you're paying and um, just everything about them. They're really good fountain pen. I was a little nervous about purchasing this, um, but I'm really glad that I did because I've had a Twisby I think it's the diamond mini in rose gold and the rose gold nib on that one was horrible. I don't know if maybe I got a lemon because um, the nib was like super scratchy. Um, I just, I really hated everything about it and I just, I figured it was probably the nib because every other Twisby I had is so nice and smooth and just a lovely pen. But thankfully, this one writes just as well as all my other Twisby pens, um, and it's just beautiful. The rose gold nib, the off-white cream color pairing with the rose gold is just gorgeous. So I'm really glad I got this and have been using this pen almost daily now. Um, it's become one of my favorites. It's, it's just great. It's smooth. It has a very large ink capacity and for the price you can't beat it. It is such a beautiful and well-made pen. And for my least favorite pen purchase of 2023, it's a little disappointing because I do love the design and the look and feel of this pen and this was a pen that I was really excited about owning. Um, this is the Esterbrook SD Botanical Garden. If you watched my DC Pen Show vlog, you'll know the story behind my purchasing this at the show. Um, I also got a custom nib grind on it. And I got the medium size nib and was able to get a custom grind at the pen show um, and got a custom scribe which is like a modified architect um, nib almost and I think at the time I was you know of course I tested it and everything it seemed great but I think that it's just not my style of nib maybe or I was not really too knowledgeable about it, um, so now it's just not my favorite type of nib to write with. It's It feels super scratchy and there's a lot of feedback. Like I like to write with a nib that has feedback, but this just seems like a lot and it's just too scratchy for me and I don't know, maybe I have to try a different ink with this. I just have not been reaching for it. Um, as much as other pens and it's a shame because I love this pen so much the look and feel of it it's just so beautiful but I don't know I, I think I just have to try a couple more inks with this pen maybe it is the maybe it's the inks that I've been trying but I don't know I really want to love this but it's just not my favorite and now for the best stickers that I purchased Usually I'm not a big sticker purchaser. Um, I prefer PT tapes and washi tape, um, but I really enjoyed using the Sterling Ink washi stickers. She has, I think it's um, more like the vinyl ones um, as well, but the washi sticker sheets are my favorite. Um, Catherine, the owner of Sterling Ink, she, like hand illustrates and paints all of these monthly collections and they are just so gorgeous and detailed and the quality really is worth the price I think so I purchased a lot of these over 
months and was kind of like stockpiling them but then um, really just enjoy using them in my sterling ink common planner they just look so beautiful and they blend really naturally into the paper that I just love it and it's just such a beautiful aesthetic that she has with these stickers um, I highly recommend I think I prefer the ones without the like gilded details um, but those are super nice as well I only have a few of those ones and then I have a bunch of other ones that I've used in my folders and things like that but these are some newer ones that I recently purchased during one of her sales I definitely think um, going forward I would purchase more um, they are a little bit pricey but I don't mind because I I know that the quality really is worth it and I love supporting artists like Catherine and my least favorite sticker purchases for 2023 um, I was really into like purchasing from Sticky Club um, their sheet stickers and I like that they do support independent artists I just think that the designs maybe are just not my thing anymore they're a little more cutesy I mean you can find some more um, I guess non cutesy ones as well because they have such a nice variety I just don't find myself using them as much or like the more fancy ones I like hold on to which I need to just use but yeah I I don't find myself gravitating towards them and I just have a bunch of these that I just really need to start using um, and also because the sticker mediums are so different depending on the artist and the sticker type I just I don't know there's something about it that I'm just not using these and so I just need to not purchase from them this year I think and just use what I have but yeah I'm not gravitating towards these and really need to just um, use up what I have and purchase and then start purchasing things that I do like, like the Sterling Ink sticker. So one of the best organizer and storage purchases that I made is this Jam Studio sticker album. And you can get it off of Jet Pens. And I believe I was watching some of Amanda Lee Plan's uh, Instagram stories and she recommended this and I love it. They have different um, storage sizes. This is the narrow album and it perfectly fits PET tape strips. So if you have a roll, you can cut it down to the size and then fit it in these slots. Or if you have sample loops of um, PET tapes, you can fit them in easily. And it's just a lovely way to more easily and clearly organize PET tapes, which I love. and it just encourages me to use up more of my PET tapes more often because they're all here in one place and I can kind of just see everything and just grab it and cut it and use it which I am more motivated to do if they're rather than if they're just sitting in like my baskets or my you know containers in rolls that I have to unroll look through cut out I don't know it just takes so much more effort and time and I love this it's really convenient even to travel with as well or you know take places if you're cafe journaling or going out with friends to journal it's so nice and you get so many pages and then in the back there's also a large zipper envelope to keep I keep my sticker sheets in here and maybe some paper ephemera and then there's pockets in the back and front covers where you can keep larger sheets or ephemera as well. So I highly recommend this as well. Um, thank you, Amanda, for suggesting this because it's really awesome. I love keeping it on my desk as well. About an A5 size, um, but I just, I, yeah, I keep it on my desk and um, I'm going to, I plan to add in all the other washi tape rolls that I have, just cutting up strips and including this in the book. 
And the, my least favorite purchase for a storage slash organizer accessory um, is this Absence Studio Tofu. It's like a mini keychain binder that you can store washi tape and stickers and kind of have like a little notebook as well. They have paper that you could maybe do swatches. I thought this would be really handy to take along with me um, to kind of have some washi and stickers on hand. I just have not used it that much and I don't really think it's that functional because it's kind of small and so it's like really hard to fit even a lot of washi on this, especially as a binder. I don't know. It's cute, it's unique. I just don't really find myself using it that much and kind of think it was a little bit of a silly purchase. My favorite washi tape purchase of 2023 were absolutely these Abby C washi tapes that she finally released in the US. I purchased them from Yoseka Stationery and I know they sold out pretty quickly but I purchased uh, three of the designs. I believe this is the Autumn, Academia, and the Ephemera designs. And they're a little bit pricier than your average washi tape, but I think these were like $10 each, which is really pricey for washi tape. But of course, I love everything that Abby creates and, um, very inspiring in the journaling and stationary world so I saw them and I knew I had to get them and I'll be honest I use these a lot in my journaling spreads the designs are so beautiful and useful I just think they're really they're worth the higher price point they're one of my more frequent washi tapes and so I think that these, this was definitely a favorite in terms of washi tape that I've purchased this year. They're just very unique and beautiful and um, really have Abby's uni unique sense of design. I'm going to add in another best washi tape purchase and this one is a little more unique because I feel like they're more than washi. They're almost like stickers as well but this is the Noret volume 8 series planner 2 washi I believe they were called and it had like a more red um, strip and then the blue collection strip and I really like these because of the design the colors they're so unique and because this washi tape has a backing so you can kind of just cut um, or select where you want to um, remove from the strip and then pull off the backing so almost like a it's almost like a PET tape but in washi form and the designs are just really beautiful they they blend really well in my journal pages and I just think they really complement um, my journaling style really nicely so I used these a lot this year. The worst washi tape that I purchased this year was actually also from Noret, but this was the uh, this was the journaling washi tapes, and I purchased them in the C design and the D design. So it was like a blue themed one and a more like pinky florally design one. And while I love Noret products and imagery, I just think this one kind of fell a little short and I'm glad I didn't purchase all the other designs. I just think that this tape, it also has a backing like the other ones. This one was designed so that similar to the other one, it's like a washi tape material. It blends really nicely with um, journaling paper and it was supposed to have the ability that you can kind of write on these and I just didn't think it looked great and I didn't find myself using them. The images were like not my cup of tea. I don't know. 
I just didn't really vibe with it that well. And I think that compared to the other washi tape um, collection, this one doesn't this one doesn't blend as well with journaling pages. So I just didn't use these that much. Just was not my favorite for this year. I purchased a lot of, you know, the regular like wooden stamps as I do. Um, but I realized that I have way too many and I need to slow it down. So uh, towards the end of the year, I kind of just held myself more accountable and stopped purchasing wooden stamps just because I feel like I have so many and I don't really use all of them that much. So the only real big stamp purchase I made were these clear stamps from Everyday Explorers that I've always wanted to try. And it turns out I really love them. I think they're super cute and functional. They're just more convenient. I think you can bring a lot of them if you're going somewhere and journaling. Um, so yeah, I really love these and I think um, I would love to purchase more in the future, but right now I'm really content with the ones that I have. So I purchased the journaling one, which has a lot of like fountain pen inspired prompts and images and journaling. This is the cafe one, which has like boba and tea and coffee related items. And then this one is the Abbey C. It came with one of their monthly like journaling kits um, and it was a limited edition. And I knew I had to get it because it was also like journaling and documenting um, slash writing themed and I just really love it of course because it's Abby as well and finally I also purchased this currently inked set which I love for um, my swatch book and for stamping and kind of documenting my fountain pen inks one stamp purchase that I did not love is this Midori um, habit tracker stamper and this has the ink in it so you kind of just stamp it. Um, I thought I would try this as like a functional stamp so that I could track things and use either my Tombows or my highlighters in the grid. I didn't use it that often. Um, the colors also that I use with the highlighters just kind of um, bled with the ink that this stamp uses so it just it felt kind of messy to me. I think also this can be really hard to stamp. It just doesn't evenly stamp onto the journals, at least the, in my experience. So it's a little fussy, it's not my favorite, and I just don't reach for it that much. I think functional stamps like this are great. I just know that it's not really my style and I am not really so motivated to use these types. And I also don't love the self-inking types either. I'd rather have standalone stamps and standalone inks that I can use together. One of my favorite ink purchases is this Taranishi Nostalgic Honey ink. Um, this has been talked a lot about online. As someone who loves more neutral fountain pen um, inks, this one is perfect. It is definitely a unique brown. Um, of course, it pulls a little bit more towards like an orangey brown, which really is so beautiful and different. And it sets it apart from a more everyday uh, brown color. It's a little bit lighter. Um, but it's perfect for daily journaling and it writes so smoothly with my fountain pens as well as is pigmented enough um, um, depending on the nib size as well and I just really enjoyed this ink. And my least favorite fountain pen ink of 2023 is this Sunlit Jade that was like a Lunar New Year limited edition ink. It is a shimmer ink, which I already knew I don't like shimmer, so I don't really understand why I purchased this. I think that I got super excited about a Goulet pens. They were having like an ink sale, and so I just impulsively purchased 
a couple full bottles of ink without you know ever testing them and this was one of them and while the bottle is gorgeous I just don't love the shimmer aspect of this ink it is a nice green color which I love a good green ink the shimmer is just not for me it's really sparkly and it gets everywhere um, and I also realized I don't like Ferris Wheel Press ink formulations. Many of them are not pigmented, they're very light, they can be very dry depending on the fountain pen that you use, and yeah, I just don't think I'll be purchasing much Ferris Wheel Press inks any longer. This one was very disappointing and I, as you can see, I have like a full bottle still. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what were your best or worst stationary purchases of 2023. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!